Good morning, everybody, and happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm wearing a nice brighter green shirt. That's all the green I have. My name is Jade Alberts, the founder of Peer Guidance, sharing knowledge and stories is why I started telling it like it is. It is a live show. If you have a question, ask away. If you're watching this after the fact on a social media platform, put your question in there. We will answer it. I would like to thank uh, today's sponsor, Matador Pizza and Steakhouse. They've been serving Calgary's best pie, it's Greek style pizza since 1976. Jason and his team over there are awesome. Why they are sponsoring? Because not only are they a pizza company, they are a tech company. They You can pay for your pie in Bitcoin. So we will talk a little bit about Bitcoin and that later, but uh, get down there, buy yourself a pie and uh, pay for it in Bitcoin. But I am excited to talk about uh, today's guest, Liz O'Connell, the founder of Aerolytics. Liz, how are you today? Happy St. Patrick's St. Patrick's Day, Jade. Um, I'm doing great. I haven't had any green beers yet. I swear. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, this is one of my like favorite holidays, actually. So anyway, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm doing great. Well, it just worked out that you have Irish heritage and you're on St. Patrick's Day, and I can honestly say I did not plan that out. That's just fluke. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Well, I know I love talking about how we met and because it's such a networking is such an important part of business, especially as a startup. And we met through um, the startup TNT. You were pitching there. I was an, an investor at the time and we had a few meetings and coffees while we could. And then there was a lull and, and here we are can probably go for coffee again. But we were able to make a, a connection there. And the startup TNT process was obviously very beneficial for you with you know, winning the, uh, winning the con, I guess the investment summit. Thanks Jade. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. That was, um, probably one of the, the huge bonuses of that competition was just being able to connect with some of the investors through that and people that I probably would have never met like you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will get to that eventually because we want to talk about the importance of finding funding, but I'm going to do a quick introduction, Liz, about you, and then we'll get after it. So Liz is the president and co-founder of Aerolytics, an emission software company that tracks emission performance for energy companies and leverages data to optimize reduction opportunities. Prior to her role, Liz worked for several years as an emission scientist where she spent time in the field analyzing emissions from thousands of wells and facilities across Alberta. She has authored multiple research articles on the topic of methane emissions from the oil and gas sector. Liz holds a a Bachelor of Environmental Science from St. FX University. So I'm just going to throw this out there, but you are one of the most impressive companies I've ever seen pitch and invested in. So please share how Aerolytics started. Uh, thanks so much, Jada. I appreciate the comment. Um, so about, let's see here, it was, I think, 20, yeah, 2018, a um, couple years ago now, um, back in a different life, myself, uh, our, our other co-founder, Emmy Atherton and David Risk, we were all working and, and doing research in a university lab. As I mentioned in the bio, uh, we were doing tons of development around technology for methane emissions detection. We were in the field in Western Canada, collecting emissions data, analyzing that data, working closely on and collaborating with industry on different types of projects around their emissions. And this was kind of before there was any requirements to actually care about this issue. There weren't regulations that, you know, there we were working with proactive companies that just started to become aware that that this is something that, you know, they, they need to care about. And so in 2018, the federal and Canadian governments, um, sorry, federal and provincial governments announced brand new regulations that the whole oil and gas sector needs to reduce their methane emissions by 45%. And by doing that, they need to go out, they need to actually measure their emissions um, from from hundreds and thousands of facilities all across Canada um, multiple times a year. So this was kind of like, okay, hello, this is a new pain point for industry. They've never before had to had to do this, have to actually directly measure and manage the data around this, comply, uh, disclose their, their emissions. And so um, the three of us with our academic background and working in, in um, you know, really closely with this type of data and the processes around it, um, we realized that there's kind of a knowledge gap in industry and ultimately producers, they're in the business of producing oil. They're not in the business of, of managing emissions and, you know, that's kind of a side gig. And so that was really the spark that formed Aerolytics, seeing this, this new pain point and the gap in, in our unique expertise in this area and the opportunity that presented itself with that. You know, that's always, uh, you know, hearing, hearing this kind of a story of where a company 
starts is always interesting, right? It's a pain point, it's a personal, it's um, something they're just trying to solve a problem on their own, whatever it may be. But before you know it, boom, the three of you come up with uh, an idea for this. So obviously in the beginning when you were, you know, looking at this and, and you were going to mon monitor, the regulations are popping up, you know, how were you able to capitalize on the changing, you know, regulations? Yeah, great question, Jade. So just a little bit of background on methane and the, the space. Why is methane so important? So methane is has about an 80 times greater warming potential than carbon dioxide. Often when we think about climate policy, there's a lot, you, you might think about CO2 emissions, that's something that often comes to mind first. But methane really is a low hanging fruit because there's so much opportunity to mitigate uh, methane based on, you know, when you compare it to CO2 and you'll get way greater um, kind of GHG warming potential reduction. So um, methane, it's it's really difficult to manage because it's colorless and odorless. It's not like when you have an oil and gas pipeline leak where you can visually see the leak. Um, so there's, you know, it's, it's a tricky thing to, to manage. And also the source of methane leaks is it comes from tiny little point sources on, you know, as I mentioned, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, facilities across North America and, and globally. And um, and so when we think about regulating methane, that could be as easy and, and fixing methane. It could be as easy as tightening a, a flange or a valve on a, on a well site. But there's also um, you know so many different sources and tiny little point sources of methane. Um, and so I think that these regulations um, they just got enforced last year actually. So that's um, I think it was great timing for our company because it enabled us to um, to get our foot under the door, really build up um, initially more of a consulting type um, approach where we would um, you know get our foot in the door with companies, help them plan and prepare for these regulations, leveraging new technologies around leak detection and and build kind of an optimized measurement program from for them. And then last year, when the regulations are finally, you know, became enforced, that enabled us the opportunity and the time to to build our software, get our MVP out the door, and and start early pilots with companies. Um, and so it's it's really like a rapidly evolving space. There's meth there's methane regulations all across Canada and Mexico, states specifically in the U.S. right now. Uh, we're watching the U.S. really closely because with the change of administration, there are rumors that there will be, um, you know, new methane policies through the EPA in force. So that's a great opportunity that, that we're following closely. And um, another thing in Canada that's pretty cool is that there's actually over a billion dollars in federal and provincial funding right now for um, support to for, for um, subsidies to support the oil and gas industry in their emissions reduction. So it's just such a like a rapidly evolving space. There's so much, um, you know, the regulations are there. There's things are changing. There's funding programs popping up left, right and center. So it's a really fun um, you know, space to be involved in right now. No, absolutely. And it's always nice when there's government money around <laughs> to pay for, pay for the company that you just created and, and starting to scale and grow. Absolutely. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think even when we think about globally, there's about 200 methane policies worldwide around the world. So it's not just like a Canada problem. This is something that's really becoming um, an international and global problem. I was going to ask about that. So does Canada regulations different from uh, the uh, the American, which is different from the EU? Or are they all kind of, are, are they collaborating or are they kind of all making up their own? Yeah, so there are some, um, like the UN, for instance, is working on um, uh, something called OGMP, which is, a, which is a regulation that a bunch of companies globally are now kind of voluntarily locking into. There's um, there are a lot of similarities. So in terms of like our software and our platform, we are able to kind of tailor that to different jurisdictions based on the regulations because the the overall general work practice of the type of data, the scale um, is, is quite, you're, you're able to export that to different jurisdictions, which is great. Cool. I mean, that's great. I mean, obviously, everybody always uh, says bad things about, uh, you know, Alberta, even though we, we know it's not and we're a leader and, 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 and so as we are in Canada. So when you when you're trying to grow, obviously, you're going to need clients and you're going to look for clients and you've gotten some really good press in the past about some of your clients. So are you able to share who you're working with and who you obviously are trying to work with? Sure. Um, thanks, Jade. So right now, we're like our, our current target market is the upstream oil and gas sector in North America. So really looking at um, companies that are proactive on their on their emissions, who you know 
they have the company culture. Maybe there's pressure from their investors uh, around environmental social governments to start actually acting and disclosing um, these types of metrics and data more transparently. So it's really those those are the types of companies um, that are our you know, target market. Um, we do see a lot of opportunities in even the midstream and downstream sector as well. Um, along our kind of product roadmap, we are considering opportunities in other emitting uh, industries such as fossil fuel power generation or other industries because ultimately as you know it's not just the oil and gas sector that is emitting gases there's tons of other opportunities so um, but right now it's really the, the upstream oil and gas sector we're really lucky to be piloting with a couple of really proactive innovative companies of different sizes um, in Canada and we're just working uh, we landed our first U.S. client last year as well so um, that's been really fun for us to just see and, and get our foot in the door with different types of companies and understand the work practices for um, and and how we can support. So it's it's been good. No, that's excellent. Again, I'm talking with Liz O'Connell, the founder of Aerolytics. For more information on their website, just go to the comment section and click on their link. It'll take you directly there. I know you guys, you know, when you're working and you're out there and then you got a really big shout out from uh, from CNRL and and they give you some really good press press. You can't you, you, you can't market that press or buy that press. And then, of course, you uh, got a really big shout out from uh, the Alberta government and Jason Kenney. So how, how did that help? How did that come about? <laughs> <laughs> good, good question. I had no idea. I just I was out hiking on the weekend and uh, I came back and my phone had blown up and I was like, oh, Jason Kenny tweeted about us. So um, that was uh, pretty neat. Um, I think, yeah, any any press is good press, I guess. And so it was, um, you know, helpful to just expand um, our reach. And I mean, ultimately, the oil and gas sector does get, um, you know, a lot of negative press and I think this whole movement around sustainability and, and ESG and the fact that companies, they're feeling empowered. There's so much value in this data um, around strategic business insights. They can understand like what are the greatest you know opportunities for emissions reductions. This is at the end of the day, methane leaks or methane is, you know, about 90 around percent natural gas. And so I'm uh, sorry, natural gas is composed around 9% or so plus of, of methane. And so when methane leaks are occurring, that's lost product of, of what a, a natural gas producer is trying to, you know, sell and 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 pipe down, <laughs> pipe down the pipeline. So um, there is really a good news story and a business case to start caring about these emissions. And Canada really is a global leader around um, the regulatory space and and the obligations for the sector. So I think it's you know we need to be proud of this and 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 show how proactive industry is being around their emissions because it really is. Um, something that that a lot of companies are are taking quite seriously so it's, it's been good no i agree and anytime uh, the premier of alberta can shout out the good that you're doing in the industry i think that's uh that says uh that statement right there says says a lot about uh, the progress and where you guys are going so congratulations on that thanks <laughs> uh so i want to kind of stop talk a little bit here about you know your, your startup tnt experience um you know, entrepreneurs always, you know, I see a lot of entrepreneurs, they have a nice little laid out plan. And, you know, I'm going to start here. I'm going to get to here. I'm going to get angel funding here. And, you know, it's all within a year. And it's like, okay, well, let's just, you know, throw that out and, and we'll, we'll let, let, let's try something new here. And, you know, hopefully in a perfect world, you get it, but it usually doesn't work that way. So you're out there, you're working on your business. You, you come into the investment summit, not only do you win it, but you secure extra uh, funding. So why don't you walk us through that journey? Sure. Thanks. So the startup TNT journey was was really unique for us because I I think going into it we had no idea what to expect. I just got an email. I was like, sure, it looks cool. <laughs> I'll apply. And I, um, you know, I we I get a lot of emails like that. So I was kind of like, okay, another opportunity. Let's go for it. And um, as you mentioned, we were really honored and, and and lucky to be kind of the Calgary based winner of that investment. And for us, that was just really huge validation for our company because the way the investment summit works and. If you're not familiar, uh, the listeners can tune into last week's episode to hear Zach Storms, who explains it all. Um, but there's it's a really collaborative approach where you have dozens of, um, or about a dozen, I think, on the Calgary side or so, investors that all um, collectively go through due diligence with the companies. They they need to come to a consensus around their investments, and it's um, a really neat process that was so unique for us. And so um, 
and to have that kind of, yeah, you know, be selected for that, that investment was really great uh, validation to, to hear, you know, have that support from that pool of investors. And um, just the, the whole experience, as I mentioned, it's very collaborative. I think we came out as a stronger company because when you're, you're getting this input from different investors who have different experience, um, our data room, you know, has never been so strong because we, we really were able to um, get some good support with that. And, um, and it's so much more than just capital through these programs. Um, when some of the investors that are involved with startup TNT are now on our advisory board, we were able to do a side deal um, with M Tech Innovations through that uh, competition. We probably never would have met that group if if it wasn't for that competition. And so that was a tremendous outcome of that. Um, but overall, I think the the competition just really got the snowball and the momentum building for our company. We were able to. Uh, secure our lead investor about a week to two weeks after the competition, someone we had been talking with for a couple months. And that was kind of the, they're like, okay, we're in, <laughs> let's do this. Um, and then I mentioned we did the side deal. And so within about a couple of weeks uh, period after the summit, we were able to close um, and and actually close on more than we had originally um, set out to to raise an RC financing round. So it was really, really great uh, experience for us. And I'm, here I am still doing things like this, like Jade, you're a perfect example of someone I met through that. So can't complain. It's, it's, it's yeah, very helpful. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, when you try and tell somebody or, or, or you're like, oh, it's just a pitch competition. I'm like, no, no, this is uh, a lot different than, uh, you know, the money is, is a lot greater. I know that summit that you, uh, you know, you won. And then, of course, Jana's coming on next week of True Angle. And, and she was also a winner out of the Edmonton area. I mean, there was just, you know, over $700,000 handed out to, I believe, four companies. So it wasn't just uh, yourself and Jana that won, that the investors um, were able to throw in extra. And even some of the, uh, the, comp the holding companies are still open and people are still putting money in there for these for them but as you say the uh the connections that are made that you're able to do whether it be eat on or whether it be myself mm -hmm. or whether it be you know whoever else is out there there is a lot of knowledge and everybody in this ecosystem is so collaborative and i i really commend what zach has started and i've come on and helped them to recruit companies and, and investors and things like that because Anytime you can get money in the hands of entrepreneurs that deserve it, their companies are are there, they're legitimate, they're about to scale, and, and they've they've they're past that MVP stage, in my opinion. It, it, it's great for our economy. And now, you know, we're talking, you're you're using this money, and let, let's talk about what you're gonna use the money that you uh, that you won for. Sure, absolutely. So um, for first and foremost, for us, the raise was about scaling our team. It's really um, trying to meet the demand. This is a time sensitive market with all of these regulatory changes. And so we're we're actually posting a uh, stay tuned today, um, two job ads, one for um, more technical support on our software team, and then one um, on the more BD side of things. And so we'll be scaling our team. We have a bunch of interns uh, that will be hiring as well in the summer. Um, leveraging different funding programs for things like that. And um, and so that's, yeah, just having more hands on deck. I'm, I'm so excited to just, um, yeah, grow and scale. And I think for us, a little bit of our, our, our um, kind of a bottleneck of our progress has been on our dev team. We just need to scale that a little bit more. And um, our, by the way, just a bit of background. Yeah, our company is actually based in both Halifax and Calgary. And so um, all of our software developers are out on the East Coast and then more of the BD side of things is run out of Calgary. And so, yeah, just looking for, for talent. If anyone out there is listening that is interested, uh, feel free to reach out to me, just a little pitch, because um, we're, we're definitely scaling our team over the next few months. And so that's first and foremost. Um, and with that will come a lot of, um, you know, movement on our, our product, releasing some new modules and some new functionality in the coming months, um, really just, you know, helping us to support our pilot phase and, and, um, and getting that out the door. And um, yeah, so it's, it's all good growth and, and, and hiring. So well, growth is good, right? You come in there and there were some very, very good companies that were, were you know, were in the uh, investment summit and to win that is, is awesome. And, and I can't say congratulations enough, but now you take that and, and that money isn't just going into your guys' pockets. Like if people don't understand how, I mean, you're investing that, you're hiring people in Calgary, it, it, it's, it's trickling down into our economy. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm seeing now over the last probably six months, more and more angel companies are coming to Calgary because they're seeing what start the companies that are coming out of startup TNT, they're seeing them talk about themselves and like, 
oh God, I, I got to get in on this. I got to, I got to get, look what's going on in Alberta. Things are happening here. And, and, and companies like yourself and, and Jana and even some of the ones that, you know, didn't win are, are, are able to get investments and open doors because of people seeing them. I mean, we're having 160 to 200 and some people watch these summits, you know, every time we go to pitch. So I think that's such a good thing for our economy. No, absolutely, Jade. And I think another really cool thing about that whole experience was um, often being an entrepreneur, it's lonely. I think, you know, right now we're all working from our home offices. You've heard that before. And um, being able to get introduced to those other companies, it's like, oh, we're, we're going through the same thing. You know, you just kind of have this immediate connection when you meet other entrepreneurs. Um, it doesn't matter what sector they're in. But uh, the, the thing like, yeah, Startup Team Team, the community Zach has built has just been a really cool experience to now I know companies in Edmonton, I would have never known all those companies before. And, you know, we're chatting with them on the Discord platform. And it's just a cool, um, yeah, it's just a really cool startup community that I'm very proud to be part of. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, and I mean, they've expanded the Saskatchewan Summit uh, yeah. is, is tomorrow. So there's uh, five great companies uh, that are going to be pitching there. And you mentioned the Discord. And and uh, I didn't get into the Discord right away, but I, I always try to pop in there every Thursday. The amount of, you know, not only just entrepreneurs, investors, people passionate about the system are there. They're talking, they're collaborating, and, and I've made some great connections there. So anybody that wants to pop in, it's on Discord, the Startup TNT channel every Thursday goes at six, sometimes till one. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'm usually not there that late, but it, it, uh, there's lots of interesting people for that. So anybody wants to make some connections in that world, uh, you know, pop on by. So what is next for Aerolytics? Yeah, I think, um, so yeah, for us, it's just, you know, we, we close the round, let's put our head down. It's <laughs> so much when you're raising is, uh, you know, getting out the door, scrambling, talking to so many investors, raising is like a full-time job and then you're running the business on the side and it's just, um, so it's really a wonderful feeling to just like, let's put this into action now. Um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time on our product roadmap. We have, um, you know, our, our plans, we have key milestones we need to be hitting over the next year. Um, we have a, a formalized board of directors now after our raise. And so we're really kind of working on establishing more, um, you know, formal governance practices within our company and, and growing. And um, yeah, so I think, yeah, but we're just chasing, <laughs> chasing after it. I think one of the, the main things are, investors uh, had for us one of the, the main tips for us was just speed like let's let's do it just get out the door and 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 go for it so just we're, we're trying to take that mantra with us and carry on into 2021 that's awesome growth is good growth is good yeah. <laughs> and you said with all the environmental regulations coming in that's a, it's a prime time for you to to get in front of them and and show them how you can you know help them you know obviously regulate the the government the policies that are coming in Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's 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 been good. <laughs> well, that's good. I always hate when my interviews have to come to an end because it's you know the companies are always like yourself are interesting, the stories are interesting. I I just I just I'm always sad, um, and it's too early to go out for St. Patrick's Day yet. So. <laughs> Hey, it's probably like, I mean, what time is it in Ireland? <laughs> yeah. but I, I, my, my last question, Liz, is always the same. And, uh, and, um, and I, but I want to put a little spin on it for you. I want to put it on the fundraising side, uh, the, you know, trying to get capital, whether, you know, your seed round. If you had one piece of advice for a small business startup entrepreneur to get the money into the seed round or become successful in securing seed money, what would that be? Sure. Um, so I, I think for us, it's it's both just being resilient, getting out there and, and just reaching out to everyone that like leveraging your connections. It's for us, one of the hardest things when we first started financing and, and, and raising is is understanding who to be talking to. It's, you know, as a, as a startup, it's like, okay, you know, what, what types of investors, how do we connect with the angel networks? What is, um, like, who do we leverage here? And so I think just being open to talking to anyone, leveraging your, your current connections to get more connections and, um, and really work on refining your story. When I think back to our first investment pitch we did to, um, the TNT one, it's wow, we, our story changed. It's, you know, just really working on refining your message, showing your passion in your story and, and the why and, and your expertise and, and why you guys are, you know, why we're the perfect people to be doing this. And so 
um, that definitely takes time to just kind of refine, refine. Um, when I think about our company, we're we're very coachable, and I think that's something like we've always been just very open to um, feedback and to any types of um, you know suggestions. We'll take it. So I think um, like a perfect example of that is is going through the Creative Destruction Lab process. We got connected with all these incredible mentors and just really really amazing um, business people with the backgrounds to to show it and. Um, you get so many different like perspectives and so many different uh, kind of overwhelming, to be honest, uh, like inputs on your business. And it, it's really hard to sometimes know um, what to do. So I guess anyway, to be more concise, my my advice would be to, to be open to all the feedback, take it, listen to everything. And then at the end of the day, go back with your founding team and just reflect, but ultimately do what's best for your business because, you know, the founders are, are, are what at the end of the day, know their business best. And so, yeah, be coachable, be open, but, but just, yeah, act on, on what, act on what you know best. Well, that's great advice. You, you uh, gave some, some excellent tips in there, especially about, you know, getting out there, reaching out, talking to people. You never know who you're talking to. I mean, I even tell that to our daughters, even at, at a young age, right? Get out there. This guy could be your boss in 10 years, or you could be a business partner with them in 10 years or her or whoever it is. Right. So, Getting out there, putting your, putting your, sharing your story, you know, doing some investment summits, things along those lines, and and, and more importantly, learning from some of those because not obviously everyone is going to come out a winner in the investment summit, but learning and leveraging. Like I had a, a gentleman reach out to me after the clean tech one, which we just fin finished up last week and handed out just over four four hundred thousand, I four hundred and sixty thousand, I think it's up to now. And he's like, oh, Jade, can you introduce me to this person, this person, this person, and this person? I was like, I can, but you know what it means more is if you reach out to them and, mm -hmm. and, and go, hey, hey, I was just in this and they were investors and they're doing this. It's like if you reach out to them, that shows as a founder that you're, you're, you're looking for money, you're serious, you've got a good story to tell, and you're going to be aggressive and, and things along those lines. So I think that's a very good, uh, very good point to, to make, and a lot of people – um, if they like your company, they will also introduce you to, I still will introduce them to some of the other ones, but mm -hmm. I'm like, you, you, let's, you know, go out on your own as well. Mm, I like that. I like that. It's a good, yeah. Don't be afraid to, to reach out for sure. You know, worse that happens, you don't hear back. <laughs> That's so, all good, right? Right. So what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, then we'll come um, again, Liz, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I love your story. Um, I'm excited to be along, uh, you know, for the journey of, of watching you guys grow and, and, and help make the world a more environmentally friendly place. So, again, congratulations. Thank you for joining me and sharing your story. And uh, I look forward to, to chatting in the future. Thanks so much, Jade. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, this was really fun. This is the first time I've done a live interview like this, so I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> well, you, you knocked it out of the park. You did good. Just smiling and laughing. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> a good way. Yeah, to start the day. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, happy St. Patrick's, everybody. If you're going out for a few pints, please don't drink and drive. Call an Uber or a taxi and uh, enjoy your Wednesday. Liz, thanks again, and we'll chat soon. Thanks, Jade. Bye-bye.